Park users have always been here. Hookers has always been on Vesterbro. That's where everything of the bad things started. That's in Istegade and Vesterbro. So we have always had a um, very colorful environment. I used every kind of drugs. I had a difficult childhood and I had a lot of anger inside, so it was difficult for me to stop using. If there were a consumption room, drug consumption room, when my husband died, he wouldn't have died, not that day. I definitely can see a great difference between before and after the fixing room, definitely. Because before there were so many people in the streets bleeding and injecting and there was a lot of very miserable people lying in the streets. Now they have a place to go. I grew up in this area and I've seen how it was before and how it has turned now. And when I grew up, the junkies were in the yard where I was living and they were fixing in the street, they were really high, and now it's more in a concentrated area because of the fixing rooms. It is all right uh, they have a place they can go and fix themselves, so I think it is uh, the best way. It's nice to see that somebody is doing something for them, uh, and it, it's here and, and it's, it's nothing to do about that. I think it's all right. A drug consumption room is a place where drug users can inject themselves in a clean and safe environment. They are financed by the local government and run by workers and volunteers. They come and tell their name, uh, what they're taking, because due to overdose and everything, it's quite nice to know what's going on. They sit down, they, well, they go and get all the things that they need, prepare the drugs, take it, clean after themselves and then go out. We are not allowed to do the injection, but we can tell them how to do it right. Det er når man står udenfor i vinter morgenen og skal fix, så din blod og de forsvinder, for det er så koldt udenfor. Det er nemmere herinde, fordi der er varmt kroppen, blod der kommer gang i blodomløbet, og du får tydeligt din overblod tydeligere. Der er større chance for at du ikke skyder ved siden af. A drug consumption room is not a treatment facility. There is not expectation for the staff in the drug consumption room that people stop taking drugs. We uh, build relations uh, with the users, and when you build relation, you also uh, find trust in in one another. Giver det en uh, form for tryghed uh, for en som misbruger, at uh, når man skal indtage sit stof, at så er der nogle professionelle uh, sygeplejersker og mennesker omkring en, uh, og også selvom hvis man for eksempel ikke får en o der men bare for at blackout, så er man fri for at vågne op, og ens øh, mobiltelefon og penge og alt muligt er blevet stjålet fra en. Øh, det er meget sikrere, og det er meget bedre for folk. I don't see the drug use anymore. I see the person. And that's a very big relief for them, that that part is not really important. That's not what we're talking about. Of course we talk about it, but it's not the main thing. The main thing is how are you? Who are you? What, do you, what are your dreams? What do you want to do? In addition with this temporary fixing room, at the moment there are two more facilities in Copenhagen, all of them concentrated in Vestapol. In Istegate, the main street where the drug dealing takes place, there is Skuen, a permanent room. Fixelansen, a mobile drug consumption room, was the first one and it appeared in October 2012. It was an initiative of Anya, together with Michael Lodberg, a social activist who has always fought for users' rights with many different projects. We are in the meatpacking district of Vesterbro right now. It's a lot of parked cars. Before, uh, the people who use drugs, they were uh, injecting behind the cars. Now they can inject in the mobile uh, injecting van. Um, it creates better safety. 
uh, much better safety and health for the drug users and it actually saves lives. There has been more than 380 overdoses since the rooms opened and no one has caused a death. Nowadays, between 6 and 800 drug injections are taken per day. Therefore, Skuen is already the largest injection room in the world in terms of substance use. Back those days, drug users chewed themselves everywhere and they hide behind dumpsters and everything and they died uh, because nobody found them if they took too much. In August 2016, a new fixing room will open in Vestibule and it will replace the mobile van and the temporary one. The new facility will offer the same space as the two others when it comes to injection seats but will include a smoking and relaxing area. Downtown Vestabro. Now we actually have three safe injection facilities and none in the other parts of Copenhagen. The death among drug users in Copenhagen is bigger in all the other parts of Copenhagen. 30 million Danish kroner they used just to rebuild it. For 30 million kroner we, have, we could have had five safe injection facilities around Copenhagen. We need Fixilanza all over the town to get the drug users to get new habits, to get them to survive. Uh, and we need to establish drug consumption rooms, those places also, because of course there are drug users everywhere. And, and you don't take a drug, you don't buy a drug on Amar and then take a bus 20 minutes in here to do the drug. You do the drug when you have the drug. A lot of uh, garbage from drug users. The concentration of the fixing rooms in the same place can be a challenge for some neighbors, as both are located in a residential area. Martin has lived in Vestibol for 28 years. He admits that living in the core of the drug scene is not something easy to deal with. I think the problem uh, with the fixing room uh, right now is uh, the concentration of uh, uh, drug users and pushers, and uh, the community plans of the, uh, 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 building a new big one just uh, near us, uh, about uh, 50 meters from us, is a crazy idea. It's too concentrated, and uh, it doesn't help the problem at all. This is a, a Facebook group uh, I have made called, uh, on English, Vestibro Against the Drug Hell. It's a place where uh, we are putting uh, pictures and uh, some video streams and writing things uh, who is uh, concentrated about uh, the problems we have uh, in this area. Sometimes I consider to, to, uh, to move from here because it's it become too rough now and I have to think about my daughter. The drug scene is now concentrated in the streets next to Skuen, which makes life difficult for close neighbors like Martin. But some of Vestipol inhabitants feel that the situation has improved in the last years. It's actually positive. Uh, also for the business, I believe that already now there is a, a, a fixer room, as you know, and uh, it hasn't had a bad influence on uh, on the business. It's actually a good influence because now they're not sitting right out in front of our door. For, for these kind of businesses as a bar that I don't have to go out to the bathroom uh, removing somebody's needle and blood um, which is a problem, yeah? Um, but I do applaud if they make more fixing rooms. I think they sh there should be, especially in here in Westerbro, there should be a lot more. The placement is correct because we don't have the same problems, for instance, in the suburbs as much. So, so I think it's fine that it's located here. The city council justifies the concentration of fixing rooms in Vestipro because it has always been considered the center of the drug scene in Copenhagen. Vestipro uh, was the, the obvious place to do it, where our cleaning people setting up those uh, yellow boxes for, for, for needle to, to be dropped. We have these mobile facilities. Could that be used uh, elsewhere in the in the city? And I think that's a deb debate that will uh, continue. But uh, 
the, in, in, uh, in the opposite to Vesterbro, there was a local uh, wish to have these facilities. I don't see that wish uh, many other uh, places. Of course we can drive the Fixelangse to another neighborhood. Of course we can do that. The law is the same as Vesterbro as it is five kilometers from here. So of course we can. It's a bad excuse. Vesterbro is also defined for having a strong community network and several initiatives that lie behind the drug scene. For many, many years, Vesterbro have fought for the, for the drug users and we have taken care of them. And uh, that's a very important network and it's a very, very important work to create better conditions for drug users and to cut down the death among the most addictive drug users. One of these projects is Illegal Magazine, which is delivered all around Denmark by drug users and directed by Michael Lodberg. The profits are expanded for new projects regarding drug addiction. I've delivered 1911. I've delivered uh, 30 boxes. We started Illegal Magazine because we wanted to challenge the war on drugs. The war on drugs has become a war on people. The only solution we, we actually have to cut down uh, drugs and to educate the people is actually by informing them in good and bad about drugs. Now I sell this magazine to try and bring awareness of the safest way to use drugs if you're going to take them instead of pretending the issue doesn't exist. But Illegal Magazine is just one part of this social network. This is the Street Lawyers Building. and They helped me for the first time at about six years ago when my child was taken away from me at, a, at the age of, of nine. Uh, and it took me two years with the help from the street lawyers to get him home. Since then, Anya decided to become a part of Street Lawyers, an organization that provides both legal help and personal support to drug users who come up with tough situations. The problems we can't ask the government or the, the persons we, who works with us uh, we can ask each other, because if, if a pregnant mom, perhaps, uh, having difficulty staying on the same dose, she doesn't dare to ask her doctor, because she is pregnant and there's so much guilt. Street lawyers delivered JK cards, small advices that were introduced in injection sets. They could be found at the entrance of the fixing rooms and included answers to drug users' doubts. Even though I'm alone in my apartment, I can, I can hear some people talking to me. Am I getting nuts? The answer is, it sounds as if you have hallucinations. The faster you get to treatment, the better. Niels is a worker at Café Dugnat, a place financed by the municipality and right next to the temporary fixing room. Drug users can eat free food there, have a coffee and get warm. It's like uh, just creating something normal um, and I think the people uh, that are working here have uh, a lot of, you know, trying to get in contact with these people, not to uh, moralize or to try to change these people, but to basically listen to the things they have to say. I think that problem raised in a togetherness between uh, local, uh, local people about that something needed to be done. So all these uh, little uh, steps towards uh, changing this whole situation is, I think, what put people together. I'm happy to be a part of changing the welfare for the minorities on the street, for the drug users here because there's a part of our, they are a part of our community. These places wouldn't have been here without the social community because who cares about drug users? And when they sit at your doorstep and, and fixing, people just get annoyed because they don't know anything about us. So the social community uh, prevents the knowledge uh, makes the knowledge go out to the people around us so they understand more what, what we have to deal with. I would have lost many friends if the rooms hadn't been there. So I, I, I go to a lot of funerals right now. I've always done that as a drug user, but it's less funerals now and that's a good thing. <laughs>